Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering statistics. Now, statistics can come up in any test or any exam question, so you need to be aware of them and you need to be able to apply your knowledge of statistics to any questions that can come up. So, let's begin. So, first looking at standard deviation. So, standard deviation is basically an indication of the spread of values around the mean. So, for example, looking at this graph, uh, the mean is this middle line and the standard deviation would tell me where my values are spread around the mean. So, for example, uh, looking at one standard deviation, so this area tells me that 68.2% of my data is located within one standard deviation of my mean. And the standard deviation is better than using range because range as you might know can be influenced by a single outlier so if i had an outlier which was a high really high number or which was a really low number this could affect my uh, range but my standard deviation wouldn't be affected by a single outlier and a low standard deviation means the results are more reliable so low standard deviation would mean that you, more of your data is packed around your mean. So this just means that your uh, data is more reliable. Uh, and standard deviation allows us to test whether our differences are significant. And this is done uh, by looking at if, re if results overlap. Because if results overlap, then there is no significant difference. So for example, looking at group 2 and group 3, I can see that the standard deviations of them overlap. So this just means that the differences are not so significant, whereas comparing that to a group 1, group 1's standard deviation does not overlap, so the difference between group 1 to group 2 and group, group 3 would be significant. Alright, so now looking at the statistical test that you can be asked to carry out. So first looking at the spearman rank correlation test. So this test is basically used to find if there's any significant correlation or association between uh, two sets of uh, measurements from the same sample. Uh, so looking for cor correlation. So the null hypothesis you need to be aware of. So this is basically the opposite of hypothesis. So for example, if you hypothesized um, that there is going to be a significant correlation between a factor and another factor, then the null hypothesis uh, would be the opposite of that. So it would just be uh, that there is no significant correlation between X and Y. So for example, looking at this example where we have the temperature and the rate of respiration, um, you would probably hypothesize that as the temperature increases, the rate of respiration um, increases as well but uh, the null hypothesis in this case would be that there is no significant correlation between the temperature uh, and the rate of respiration and you also need to be aware of critical value uh, so critical value is important when we are looking at uh, if the there is any significant correlation we'll come back to that later but just remember that Critical value for a Spearman rank correlation test can be calculated by counting how many number of pairs of measurements we have. So, for example, in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, what we can do is uh, look up at nine on the table, and I see that my critical value is 0 0.68. Now, this will uh, become important later on. But now, looking at the T test. So the t-test is used to find if there's a significant difference between uh, two means uh, with the same variable. The key thing is uh, that we're looking uh, between two different groups of data. So in this case, the null hypothesis would be that there is no significant difference between x and y. Now this is better represented with an example. So for example, if I'm looking at the number of seeds, um, that have germinated and I've got different pH. So I've got pH 5.5 and, and pH 7. Now you can see that I, I'm changing the same variable. So I'm only changing pH, I'm not changing anything else. Um, so looking at this, 
um, what my null hypothesis would be. There is no significant difference between the number of seeds that have germinated at pH 5.5 and pH 7. Uh, and you need to be able to uh, calculate the degrees of freedom for this. So just remember for a t-test, uh, the degrees of freedom is the number of categories uh, minus 2. So for example, uh, in this I have 9 categories. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have um, 9 sets of data um, basically. Uh, and what I would just do is 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. Uh, and that can allow me to find my critical value. So I would go down to my degrees of freedom, I find seven, and then I can look at my uh, critical value, uh, which is 2.37 in this case. All right, so now looking at the final type of statistical test, which is the chi-square test. So this basically looks at differences uh, between uh, frequencies. And uh, the null hypothesis for this is always that there is no significant difference between uh, the observed and the expected. So for example, looking at, uh, looking at this, so we have a different type of cards from a pack of cards and we are looking at the observed. Um, so what we mean by expected is that we expect an equal distribution of the, the cards. So we, because the cards are out of 1600, so we've done 1600 observations. So what we would expect is an equal observation of all of these. So expected for, for each of them would just be 400 each um, because we would expect an equal distribution. But as you can see, the observed is different um, and it would be different in uh, real life. Um, so again, for the, in this, the degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. So I can see is there are uh, four different categories. We have spades, we have hearts, we have diamonds, and we have clubs. And uh, so I, what I would just do is four minus one, which is three, and I can look at three, and my critical value would be 7.82. Okay, so now carrying a statistical test. So first what we do is we choose a statistical test. Uh, so based on the data we've been given, it will allow us to choose one and then we can create our null hypothesis and uh, this will be dependent on the statistical test we've chosen. And then we can compare the calculated value which we've gained from our statistical test against the critical value at 0.05p or just 5% chance of it occurring. Um, and then we can either accept our null hypothesis or reject that and finally we would explain our results using probability, using the words probability and chance. Uh, so how do we explain results? So if the calculated value is more uh, than the critical value, and again 5% chance, uh, then we can reject the null hypothesis. And this just means that the difference uh, that's occurred in the results is significant. Uh, and the probability of the difference occurring due to chance is less than 5%. So there's a very high chance that the differences that have occurred have occurred because of a significant result. It's, it's not just due to chance. However, if the calculated value is less than the critical value, and then we can um, accept the null hypothesis and we can say that the difference is not significant and the probability of difference occurring due to chance is greater than 5%. So we have um, around the same wording, but it just depends on our critical value and calculated value uh, on, on to if we would accept the null hypothesis or if we would reject that. So now going through choosing a statistical test. So you can be given data and be expected to choose a statistical test and, and analyze and the, the information they give you. So for example, I've been given uh, this table um, where I've got the max nitrate concentration on the left side and I've got the max concentration of algae on the right side. So in, in this case, the statistical test I would be choosing would be the Spearman rank uh, correlation test. Now this is because uh, in, in this uh, in, in this diagram, this particular diagram, we're looking for a correlation because as 
one factor is increasing and we are seeing if if that would increase the uh, the other factor or if that would decrease the other factor so we're looking for a correlation in this case that's why we would choose sperm and rank and then to get my degrees of freedom remember for a t-test uh, I did the number of categories minus two so it, it'll be eight minus two which is six in this case and this will allow me to find my critical value by looking at the table which is 2.78 in this case uh, and the calculated value I've been given is 5.48 so in this case what I can see is the calculated value is more than the critical value 5.48 is more than 2.78 uh, so the null hypothesis can be rejected this time um, and this would mean that there is a significant difference between the rate of enzyme reaction at 37 degrees uh, and at 50 degrees and the probability of the results occurring due to chance is less than 0 0.05 or less than 5% so there is a very high chance of the results uh, being due to a, a significant and then we could be asked about the null hypothesis so in this case because we are looking at a correlation we would just simply say that there is no significant significant correlation between the uh, max nitrate concentration and the max concentration of algae uh, and then we to find the critical value first we would look at the number of pairs so in this case we have six pairs uh, and then i could look at my critical value table and I get that the critical value is 0 0.89 and let's just say we've been given the calculated value of 0 0.16 uh, you won't be asked to do the statistical test in an exam because that will take a lot of time so they might just give you a calculated value like I've just done so you've got your calculated value you've got your critical value um, in this case the calculated value which is 0 0.16 is less than the critical value which is 0.89 so you could accept the, the the null hypothesis and you could say that there is no sig there's no significant correlation between the the max nitrate concentration and the uh, max concentration of algae uh, and the probability of the results occurring due to chance is more than 0.05 or more than five percent in this case what i can see is there are two groups of data uh, and the same variable has been changed in this case it's the it's the temperatures it, so it one's 37 one's 50 so in this case what I know the test I would be carrying out would be the t test because I'm looking at two means so I can get the means or the the mean rate of enzyme reaction um, and we have the same variable uh, so in in this case the null hypothesis would be that there is no significant difference between the rate of enzyme reaction at 37 degrees and at 50 degrees okay so from here i can find the degrees of freedom so in this case there are eight results i have got so i can just do eight minus two which is equal to six that will help me find my critical value um, which is 2.78 in this case and i've been given a calculated value if, of 5.48 so in this case my calculated value is more than my critical value so this means I can reject my null hypothesis and I can say that there is a significant difference between the rate of enzyme reaction at 37 and 50 degrees. And then finally I can say that the probability of the results occurring due to chance is less than 0.05 or 5%. And make sure that you're using the word probability uh, and results um, in this case. Now looking at the final example. So in this case um, there are three sets of results uh, there basically three sets of frequencies I've been given so one is suspended on rubber band uh, one is suspended on string and one is nailed to post so there are three sets of frequencies and because of this I would be thinking of doing the chi-square test because uh, to, to find the difference between frequencies um, and so in this case the null hypothesis that I will have is that there is no significant difference between the observed and expected remember this is what you always put for this for for the chi-squared so there's no significant difference between the observed and expected and you can then find the degrees of freedom by because there's three uh, sets of results basically so you could do three minus one is equal to two so that's my degrees of freedom then i can look it up on the table 
So for two degrees of freedom, I have 5.99 as my critical value. And let's say my calculated value is four. So in this case, I can say that the calculated value is less than the critical value. And so I can accept the null hypothesis. Um, and I can say that there is no significant difference or th th there's no significant difference between the observed and the expected um, and therefore the probability of the results occurring due to chance is more uh, than 0.05 or 5%. Remember again using the words probability uh, and results in this case these are very important. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up. Thank you.